Greetings, YouTube and whoever else. We're gonna go through the full setup of the Atlas IoT on the Raspberry Pi with the pH sensor and the RTD 1000 sensor for monitoring your aquaponics, hydroponics, or anything else that you wanna monitor. These are just two of the many sensors that they have. Um, down the road, I'll look at getting the, the T3 or the, the tentacle board as they call it, which will plug directly into the Pi and gives you two electrically isolated outputs and one regular output. And I'll, I'll go cover those in a couple minutes as well. Um, but for now, we just have the pH sensor on the isolated electrical carrier board and then the RTD temperature sensor on its carrier board. These boards, I've already flashed them and set them to ITC mode or yeah, I2C mode. What you need to do is just you have to ground them in a particular way and apply power and it'll flash them from UART from basically a serial connection to I2C. Uh, pretty simple setup, takes a couple seconds to do each board. Different boards have different ground points, so you do have to watch those when you try to flash them. So if it's not flashing for some reason, if it's not go going from green to blue, you probably need to switch the ground that you're using on there because there's a ground and a P ground on some of the boards. So I'm gonna go through basic setup and then we're gonna get the software booted and show you the first time configuration and a couple modifications from there. So on the Pi, you see we've also got the digital, the camera cable. We are gonna be setting up the camera for a time lapse. So that's kind of neither here nor there right now because that doesn't integrate with this software. We just wanna get the general software set up. So first and foremost, <clears throat> you have to have your controller board here um, you've got to set this up closely you've got to you've got to have the bnc super close to this you can't run this from being from jumper wires to this because you don't have good signal on there so it's got to be super close to work properly um, now that i've got that out of the way let's go ahead and get things set up here so what we're going to do is we've got send and we've got transmit and receive or basically sda and scl on both of these boards we've got power on both of these boards so we're going to get everything set up here so our transmit and receive, we're gonna set up here. We're gonna get our ground in here. This is gonna be the shared ground with the transmit and receive on the isolated carrier board here. And we need power. So we're gonna get our power here. We're gonna get our power here. And then we got to get our signals here. All right, so our SDA and SCL, you can get these little, you can find these printouts anywhere on the web, but you can find out where they are. Um, where SDA is going to be, what, on the transmit, and then our SDL is going to be on the receive, right? Uh, let's see, yes. So SDL is on the receive, SDA. Transmit. So get those wired in. Okay, next up we've got our power. So we've got our, our ground. And then we've got our five volt. Now the documentation on the Atlas Scientific website does show some resistors in there, but I've not had an issue with this for testing so far. So um, we've got our five volt to our carrier board and five volt to our, our temperature board. So those are ready to go. Important thing, Get yourself a good quality micro SD card. I highly recommend these Samsung Pros, these are the endurance models. These are made for a lot of write activity. And when you're dealing with a Pi, that can be, a, it's obviously a good thing. So don't get a cheap micro SD card if you want longevity out of these things. So we're gonna pop that in there. We're gonna get our HDMI cable here. And la 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 la. In there, there you go. Now I did try this on a Pi Zero and I got an NJX error. I couldn't actually get the software to run on a Pi Zero. So I am gonna use a full blown Pi 3 uh, just so that we can get this set up and working because I know it does work. It takes obviously a tiny little bit more power but it's not significant in this case. I do run this off grid. So the goal is to lower the power consumption the better but the more I can add to the system the better too. Um, oh, we better get our sensors plugged in too. So, we'll get that plugged in. We'll get our pH sensor wired up in here. 
Okay. Pi is booting for the first time. I did time it. It takes about four minutes for the first boot to uh, figure, configure everything and get it rolling there. So we'll see you get, we get you up here. I got all my containers to do the pH adjustment, which we're going to do that as well since we've got it out here. It does have SSH enabled by default. It also boots to a desktop by default. Now what that allows you to do is um, if you, especially if you have a system that you're running on the grid, you can actually set this up with the seven inch Pi touchscreen and you have everything at your fingertips right there, which is really neat. But you can also set this up headless so that you don't have to have anything attached and you can monitor it remotely. The other beautiful thing is the software has what's called MQTT or Mosquito. So when you want to do remote monitoring, you can actually have it send that data to a local server or to the cloud, your choice. The cloud is not a requirement here, which is another beautiful thing. So you can use this with OpenHAB, which is what I'll be using. You can use it with Home Assistant. Um, once you take that data and put it into your choice of things, you can, you can display it with like Influx and Grafana or any number of other things that you'd want to do. Bear with us as we get uh, booted up to our desktop here. And then we're going to do our general configuration and then we will show you how we're going to we're going to leave the default password for right now um we do want to set los angeles we're good with the us we're good with english now it automatically launches into their software which is going to pick up the sensors automatically but it is nice to get this setup done here we're going to skip the wi-fi setup and we're going to skip setting up the software we're going to be done the reason we're going to skip that is because we're going to use Raspi config, Raspi config to set up the Wi-Fi so that when we boot it headless, we know that it's going to connect to the network, no problem. So, Are we plugged in? Everything's plugged in properly? Nope, we are not plugged in properly, which is why we didn't see our sensors. So we are off by a pin. It's the little breadboards. There we go. Not sure that it's going to like the hot plugging, but let's go ahead and take this out of full screen. We'll close that. All right, let's do our sudo raspi config and reboot. Second boot is noticeably faster with a decent SD card on a Pi 3. I found that the RTD sensor is fairly accurate right out of the box. Uh, you can um, calibrate that in boiling water. They actually say, you know, set it up with boiling water and, uh oh. Let's see if we get our sensors. Ta da! There we go. So we've got our pH sensor, we've got our temperature sensor. You can go from either the rest of the world to America, uh, if you like your Fahrenheit, which is good readings. A little cool in the greenhouse, or a little cool out here in the garage, this is true. So you can see we're going to bump our temperature here. The temperature is going to climb as we hold on to that sensor, so it knows that it's warm in here. So that part's done. pH, it walks you through the calibration settings here. So this is what we're going to do, is we are going to do our calibration on here. All right, so it says it wants to do our calibrations, it wants to start with seven. So we've got our pH uh, solutions here. We got our four, our seven, and our 10. So we wanna start with our seven, okay? So these are just a liquid already. I don't think you need to really mix them up at all. We will carefully open these. Okay. You have, I think it's about a 20 minute working time on these. So you do wanna get the job done. The storage solution on the tip here, after you take off the little bottle of storage solution here, you can slide the whole cap and seal off if you want. I'm gonna actually leave it on there and just slide it up a little bit. So now we can go ahead and do this, okay? And if we see on our screen here, the calibration we're going to wait for it to steady out. So they say wait one to two minutes. When it gets a fairly clear reading, then you know, it's, it's settled. You can say that it's not going to bounce around much more. And I mentioned, you know, if you've got a 3D printer, you can make your own housings for these. You can use any little pro um, project box. All right, we are 
Are we good? 7271, let's see. I think we are pretty good here. All right. So we'll click on this. Okay, yes. Tap, calibrate, once reading stabilize. The reading is stabilized, so it doesn't tell me which one to do next. I think it doesn't really matter too much what you do next, but what we're gonna do here is we're going to dump our solution out. Put a little water in here. We're gonna clean that out. We'll dump that in there. Okay. Now we're going to do our base at four. We're looking pretty steady around four two five, so we're gonna calibrate this at four. All right, so it adjusts the sensor to say that this is around four, 3.98, 4.02. All right, next up. We'll get our 10. And we will have calibrated our pH sensor. Calibration is good for about a year um, if you're not doing this with chemicals or anything and you're just going to be putting it into like a greenhouse or hydroponic solution. So you don't have to worry about recalibrating that often. The sensor will last one to two years continuously submerged, which is nice. So a lot of your cheap pH sensors are not designed to be continuously submerged. This is a lab grade sensor, so everything is sealed up properly. Um, we'll see how it works. Okay, we're looking like we've got our 10 is ready. We're getting at about a 9.9. .9. Not really moving up from there. So that's it. The kit is calibrated. Um, fixing our things did not result in an explosion, which is good. I am using filtered water here, not straight tap. Um, I kind of wish I'd bought a bottle of distilled for the project, but that's okay. All right, so now we are in normal water. We see that my filtered water gives us a reading, what, 8.4? All right, so now we have, now we have a fairly accurate pH reading and a fairly accurate temperature reading to work with. From here, we can go into our settings. Let's go home to show this again. So we go into our settings here. Okay, we can go to our MQTC setting, MQTT settings. Here you can put in your host for your MQTT. So we got our 202, client ID and password if you're doing anything there. Um, TLS is optional. If you're doing external access to your MQTT, your Mosquito server or using the cloud, you're going to be using secure settings like that. Uh, topic, we wanna know what topic that we're going to be subscribing to and then we're going to hit save well let's let's hit let's not hit save for a second um, in fact let's come back to this because what we want to do is we want to bring things up in the browser okay so we're gonna exit full screen on here okay looking at top see we're using 417 megs by running this with a GUI 415 that's we're using half the system memory just to run a GUI so we want two things we want to look at what our IP address is. Fine. Oh, fun. Okay. All right. So as you can see here, we get the data captured in a browser window. So we know that everything is accessible there. So at this point, we don't need to run an X server on the Pi. So and display on the browser over here. We can see that it has timed out on our display. It will come back. Usually you have to hit reconnect. It won't connect automatically because it doesn't boot up quite fast enough. Boom, there's our data, okay. Here's the beautiful difference. We're going from 400 megs of RAM used to 88.8 .8 megs of RAM used. So significant 
savings in, in uh, memory usage and consumption by dropping the X server out of there. You don't need the X server to run to do this. So it's just during the initial setup, it appears that it's needed. So, so this is our final bit of the setup. We've already discussed everything previously. This is the now with the sensors in the tote in the greenhouse uh, monitoring the aquaponics live. So we've already went through the settings on the Atlas IoT. We've been in here to go to the mosquito settings, get it set up to your broker. Um, so that data is now being published live to my system. I would highly, highly recommend MQTT Explorer. If you've not heard of this program before, it is a fantastic way to look at what data is being sent to your broker. It does not need to run on the machine that is the host. It can actually connect to your remote machine and get all the data and see all the data that it's receiving. So with that, I filtered it down to just the machine that I want to capture data from. And we can go through and we can look at the sensors and see where everything's being published to. So if we look, we've got our publishing path here. Phonics Pi PHADD99, that's the sensor address. What we needed to do was we need to look down here and we see where we have a value line. This is our, our JSON path is what I ended up figuring out. And I take that information, pop it into here in my settings for OpenHAM. I, it's an input, set my JSON path to our value. So that pulls in this value string here. Same thing on the sensor. We put in our full path here. We've got the Phonics Pi RTD ADD102 right up here. And then we've got a JSON path and we're looking for our Fahrenheit data. We're not looking for our Celsius data. This is the, in the red is the last result. The green is our current result. So you'll always get the current is what will be published. So with that information in hand, we get that set up and in here that is saved. And then that data is published into my open hub setup. So I've got my pH value and my water temperature values here available anytime. I then take that data and push it into Influx and Grafana. So I have live monitoring of my, my temperatures and my pH for any number of, any amount of time. So I can look at it for like the last, you know, two days, three days, set custom values, whatever I want to do. And there are little spikes in here, but you'll see most of those spikes are about a 0.1 difference. So it's nothing significant in pH spikes. Um, my pH is running a little low right now, but plants and fish are all happy. So we are going to throw some oyster shell in there to help buffer that up and bring it up a little bit, try and get it above six. So that is everything. So you've seen the whole Atlas IoT setup. You've seen capturing that data with MQTT so that you can export that data however you want using OpenHAB Home Assistant or your platform of choice. So you can view that anywhere or you can do it through a web browser as well. That's all I've got for the Atlas IoT setup on the Raspberry Pi. I hope you've enjoyed this video if you've made it this far. Um, next up coming soon, we'll try to take a look at Mycoto, which supports all the same sensors and more with the Raspberry Pi and supports doing time lapse with the camera as well. So we're looking forward to giving that a shot real soon. So we'll try and do a video on that too. Thanks for watching and have a great one.